Welcome to another lively edition of The Deadly Experiment. I'm poised right there in this chair as we're waiting for the camera to cue us in. And by golly, here we are. Rick Adams, your producer, very relaxed, sitting next to an equally relaxed and composed Scott Smith. Hello, Scott. Hi, Rick. I don't, know how back. I don't know how relaxed and composed I am. Well, you know in, what they say, it's this. better to be composed than decomposed. Well, that's, that's, gonna, for sure. that's coming too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome of that, back. I, of that, I do not worry. That's what one man once said about the music that we listen to today. He said he's for composed music. He said presently it's decomposed. <laughs> it's, it, it is. It's oh, oh, yes. terrible yes, stuff. Yes, indeed. Terrible well, here stuff. we are continuing on last week's program that we did. And we did a program really on thought control, the thought police, the ACLU, the ADL, the Southern Poverty Law Center, mm -hmm. Lawyers Guild, the uh, Communist Party, the Socialist Workers. Barely uh, scratched the surface, All of them Rick. are working for the same basic goal. Mm -hmm. Although they may differ with each other on strategy or on cases particularly here and there, that again indicates what the scriptures say about The safety. general direction of eliminating Christ from everybody's life is their ultimate aim and, right, they, and they get together based Absolutely. on that premise. And now we're paying the price. Our mm -hmm. country is falling apart. Our society, the glue that holds it together, mm -hmm. is now broken. And you know what happens that's when that glue family. comes loose. You know, you've got a mechanical product that's functioning and that cement, that glue holds it together. What happens when it starts to break it's up? It's going to just come apart. And it stops functioning. Right. And that's where we are today in America. And you're going to prepare our hearts for today's program on the 14th Amendment and more thought control mm -hmm. by reading from the Word of God. From God's Word, right. And this is out of Proverbs uh, chapter 8. And it starts verse 6. It says, Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Mm -hmm. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and I find out knowledge of witty inventions. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, there's the word of, of God saying that he will bring the truth to the ears through his lips, through our lips. Yes. We are his hands. Amen. And, and we need more people to join in with truth telling. And what the opposition, the synagogue of Satan wishes to do is to stamp out any truth telling. And, you know, any, for me, Rick, anytime I speak the truth that I have a conviction in my heart, mm -hmm. to me that's speaking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus Christ said, I am the truth. So anytime that truth is said, I believe that that is the presence of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And to me, the speaking of truth here is Christ in his word bringing the truth forth right. to all the elect who can understand. And it says right here in verse 9, and they are all plain, all these wisdoms of God, they are all plain to him right. that understandeth and write to them that find knowledge and, and the knowledge is in Jesus Christ. And that's what these people are trying to stop. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, thank Red you, Scott. Thank, thank you. Thank you, brother. And you know, uh, the, the forces of, of political correctness, as it's called, I really don't like that term because the term itself does not do justice to the nature of the people that are promoting their agenda. If it were just politically correct, we could probably argue over it and say, well, okay, his opinion is different from ours, so we're out of the mainstream. But no, what we're talking about is a Gestapo of the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rit, which really is a police force over our police force, 
And by that, what I mean is, Scott, as you know. This is Abe Foxman's right, group now. Right. They, the ADL, actually works with local law enforcement, works with our public school teachers mm -hmm. and administrators to try to inculcate a mindset in them that would automatically go after with a full arm of the law, like this fool, this attorney general we have, Lynch, Patrick Lynch, mm -hmm. who was one of the attorneys general that signed on to Israel's brutal and uh, bloody invasion of the Gaza ghetto mm -hmm. and what they have turned it into. Mm -hmm. Worse than anything we've seen in the Warsaw ghetto, anything we've seen in the it's past. It's amazing. Killing animals at point blank range with these, these weapons. In, just in a, in a, defen them on apart. a defenseless population, right, they're right. withholding Absolutely. food, they're withholding medicine, mm -hmm. they're withholding all kinds of things. And, and this is the synagogue of Satan. That's what Jesus it called emanates it. out of Jerusalem. Synagogue of Satan. And it emanates out of Jerusalem, Israel. Now, Jesus himself was made to stand trial for saying those things, for testifying to the Father that he was the Son of And the I truth. look forward to going to trial because Amen. he told, he you says to two? us, hey, he's oh. got, they'll, they'll be, they, the, <laughs> they'll more, be the more the merrier. All right, now the point of all of this I'm making, we're going to put on this Dan Smoot report mm -hmm. in just a few moments, showing how the 14th Amendment that was never legally ratified by the states that were necessary to call it an amendment came about and how it has been used to subvert the rest of the Constitution, including the Bill of Rights. It, by empowered, it empowered the synagogue of Satan to right. take over exactly. control. Exactly. To the point where now we have a totalitarian regime in Washington. And you say, oh, what are you talking about? We don't see goose-stepping soldiers walking down the street shutting you off. You're talking about it, aren't you? We're a bunch of hypocrites. And this is the mentality of these people mm -hmm. out there. When, in fact, the bill we just spoke about last week, right. the hate crimes bill, will, shut us will right do down. exactly what we're talking shut about. Shut us right down. No truth. It truth. will enable the Attorney General of the United States, Eric Holder, who himself has been involved in many nefarious activities mm -hmm. to come in and based on a complaint that we inspired somebody out there to go out and commit a quote hate crime is going to be the basis for the prosecution of people like us. So, so I mean, what if somebody goes out there and they say that because they watched your TV program right. they went out there and did something right. stupid that it's your fault. In Section 18, if we, in fact, are a co-conspirator through inspiration and mm -hmm. motivation mm -hmm. for those crimes that have been committed, mm -hmm. we can be tried. doesn't necessarily mean we'll all be convicted, but the fact is you will now be on trial. You now will have to defend yourself, mm -hmm. and the deck will be stacked against you because no attorney general like this little wimp Lynch or anyone else would want to stand up against the politically powerful ADL types that are writing this legislation to silence the veterans, the patriots, the Americans. And you know, not anybody, all anybody who like. disagrees with them, Rick, and that's the key. If you disagree with the status quo synagogue of Satan, and we'll talk about that synagogue more as time goes on. All but right. if you if if you disagree with them, it doesn't matter. That's You're all. An that's enemy all it takes. Right? You are a terrorist. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's look at the Fourteenth Amendment right now. Let's roll that tape from the Dan Smoot broadcast of 1963, aired on television across America, and you can compare then and now. I know the language may be a little different than blacks were referred to as Negroes, and that's the way they were officially designated, but the message is the same. Right, that 14th Amendment was instituted to federalize the states. To destroy the sovereignty of our states. Mm -hmm. Okay, Joe, let's roll that tape now. The 14th Amendment of the Constitution, proclaimed and ratified in 1868, was never legally adopted. Yet it is the basis for contemporary court decisions and governmental practices which are shattering the foundations of our free society. Congress should resubmit the 14th Amendment for legal ratification or rejection. I do not think we can restore the American Constitutional Republic until the people compel their Congress to take such action. Hence, I offer a brief review of the incredible history of the 14th Amendment. 
Throughout the war between the states, 1861-65, President Lincoln maintained that the American Union was indivisible, that the war was being fought not to abolish slavery, but to suppress rebellion, which threatened to dismember the Union, and that once the rebellion was suppressed, the Union of all states would exist exactly as before hostilities. The day hostilities ended, therefore, the southern states were constitutionally entitled to their full representations and rights in the National Congress. The federal government could not legally lay down conditions for readmitting the southern states because, according to the doctrine of Lincoln and the decision of war, they had never left the Union. Lincoln was assassinated April 14, 1865, five days after Lee's surrender. But Lincoln's successor, President Johnson, quickly carried out Lincoln's plan of reconstruction. In each Confederate state, Johnson appointed a temporary governor to maintain order while the people of that state held elections and formed a new state government. Persons entitled to vote in these elections were those who had been qualified to vote prior to the Civil War and who took an oath of allegiance to the Union. By mid-July 1865, all Confederate states except Texas had thus established legitimate governments. And all of them, except Texas and Mississippi, acting as states in the Union, had ratified the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery. When Congress convened in December 1865, the radicals in control refused, however, to seat representatives and senators from these Confederate states. Thus, that Congress was illegal because it denied representation to states constitutionally entitled to it. In June 1866, the illegal Congress considered proposing the 14th Amendment. The vote on this proposal failed to pass in compliance with the constitutional requirement that two-thirds of both houses must approve a resolution proposing a constitutional amendment. Nonetheless, the radical leadership of Congress arbitrarily declared the 14th Amendment resolution enacted and submitted it to all states for ratification, including the Confederate states, which had been denied representation. Ten Confederate states and four Northern states rejected the proposed 14th Amendment. So Congress passed a law abolishing the ten Confederate states, setting them up as military districts under army dictatorship with the proviso that when they ratified the 14th Amendment, they would be admitted to the Union as states. Although the Constitution provides that only states already in the Union can ratify an amendment and gives Congress no power at all to meddle in state decisions to amend or not to amend the Constitution. Army bayonets escorted illiterate Negroes and white carpet baggers from the North and from foreign countries to the poles, keeping Southern whites away. Only Northerners, foreigners, Negroes, and Southern scalawags were permitted to hold office in the Reconstruction governments thus formed. When Southern states sought judicial relief, the Supreme Court refused because the Radical Congress had threatened to abolish the Supreme Court if it handed down any decisions favorable to the South. By July 20, 1868, six of the Confederate states thus reconstructed had ratified the 14th Amendment. Meanwhile, however, two northern states had changed their minds. Their sense of decency outraged by the monstrous procedures, the legislators of New Jersey and Ohio had withdrawn their former ratifications and had rejected the proposed 14th Amendment. This meant that even with the six Confederate ratifications made at gunpoint, there were not enough ratifications to meet the constitutional requirement that three-fourths of all states must ratify a constitutional amendment. But on July 21, 1868, Congress declared the 14th Amendment ratified anyway. This illegal appendage to our organic law has been used by the Warren Court in recent years as authority for decisions which, if permitted to stand, will complete the destruction of our republic. In the school segregation decision of May 1954, for example, the Supreme Court, using the 14th Amendment as its authority, assumed the power to change the meaning of the Constitution in order to make a decision which the court desired. In the Monroe case decision of February 1961, the court held that the 14th Amendment gives certain individuals right to bypass the normal processes of law in state courts and to bring cases against state and local officials directly in federal courts. Dissenting in this Monroe case, Justice Frankfurter said, the Supreme Court's decision completely eliminates 
the constitutionally reserved rights and responsibilities of all state and local governments. In the Baker versus Carr case of March 1962, the Warren Court held that the 14th Amendment gives federal courts power to control the apportionment and districting of states for purposes of state and local elections. This decision voided the laws of Tennessee, but 26 other states were also indirectly involved. This decision, giving the federal government power to regulate the composition and representation of state legislatures, makes state governments mere branches and tools of Washington authority. In the New York School Prayer case of June 1962, the Supreme Court used the 14th Amendment as authority to reverse the meaning of the First Amendment. Whereas the First Amendment prohibits the federal government from interfering with the free exercise of religion, the Supreme Court used the First Amendment, as reinforced by the 14th, as authority to outlaw the free exercise of religion. The destructive effect of these and other recent Supreme Court decisions will grow and multiply. The Constitution gives Congress authority to prohibit the court from accepting appeals in cases involving matters which, by the clear terms of our Constitution, are beyond federal jurisdiction. The public should strive to elect a Congress which will take such action. But even if this were done, we would still have the legal chaos which illegal Supreme Court decisions have already caused. Eisenhower's invasion of Arkansas with military force in 1957 and Kennedy's occupation of the city of Oxford, Mississippi are fruits of the Supreme Court's decision of May 1954. A frightful number of public school systems in the United States have already eliminated all recognition of God in the classrooms as a result of the Supreme Court's New York prayer case decision. The most fundamental of states' rights, the right of representative government free of outside interference and domination, has already been abrogated in Tennessee by the 1962 Baker versus Carr decision and is threatened in 26 other states. Misinterpretation of the 14th Amendment, which is not a valid part of our Constitution, has caused such legal confusion as to render our system of constitutional law almost meaningless, even if the courts were restrained from further misinterpretations. Obviously, we need to eliminate the 14th Amendment and all the fruits of it, get rid of the amendment, and nullify all court decisions, executive actions, administrative regulations, and laws based on it. But how? Congress could enact a resolution proposing repeal of the 14th Amendment. But this would be tacit recognition that the amendment is now legal. Moreover, this vital question should be resolved not by some branch or agency of government, but by the people themselves. Congress should enact a resolution resubmitting the 14th Amendment for legal ratification or rejection. If the people want the 14th Amendment and all that it has produced, they could persuade three-fourths of the state legislatures to ratify it legally. I believe, however, that if given a chance, the people would tell their state legislators to reject the 14th Amendment. Large numbers of Americans are coming to realize that unless the 14th Amendment and all its progeny are abolished, we will not, no matter, no matter what else we may do, restore constitutional government in the United States. The meaning of constitutional government is that the government must be bound by the contract, the Constitution, which created the government. If public officials can change the Constitution, which they are sworn to uphold and obey, as they have been using the 14th Amendment as authority to do, then we actually have no Constitution. The law of the land becomes whatever officialdom wants it to mean on any particular day. We are at the mercy of a judicial oligarchy, which today can say that the Constitution and the laws mean one thing, but tomorrow can decide that they mean something else. That kind of chaos has already been created in our whole system of constitutional law by Warren Court misinterpretations of the illegal 14th Amendment. I know of no way to remove this confusion except by removing the basis of it, the 14th Amendment. This is a decision, however, that should not be made by Congress, but should be made by the whole people acting through due constitutional process, through process as prescribed in the Constitution.
Dan Smoot report. For a printed copy of this broadcast the and 25. Amendment. And as you can see, Scott, the proof is in the pudding. Um, the states of Ohio, New Jersey withdrew their ratification, and uh, they never had the three-quarters votes to, to obtain uh, passage. And yet it was proclaimed to be enacted by the Secretary of the State uh, of the United States. And this is the kind of lawlessness that we have had in our government mm -hmm. since all of this passage of time. Mm -hmm. since, since that time, we actually lost our constitutional government mm -hmm. of the United States of America. Absolutely. And we became the corporate United States of America. Yes, yes. Where the federal government is the parent corporation mm -hmm. and the states have become the subsidiaries of that parent mm -hmm. corporation. And that's not how our founding fathers set this government up. Right. Now, something that Dan Smoot said in the beginning, that five days after uh, mm -hmm. the uh, surrender of Lee, that he was killed. Right. But that's not the reason that he was killed. He was killed because right. in this reconstruction process that Lincoln was going through, other than instituting the 14th Amendment, he, they were, and, and the synagogue of Satan was mm -hmm. gaining an entire country and an enslavement of an entire uh, people. Christian people. Mm -hmm. and, but they were, they were going to gain that, but they were going to mm -hmm. lose control mm -hmm. over the money supply and supplying the money because up until mm -hmm. that point, there had been two banks, private banks, that controlled mm -hmm. the, the, the currency. Israel and those European Jewish banks. That's right. Again. The international gangster mm -hmm. banksters that are controlling the Federal Reserve right now were at that time uh, in control of the banking system. And one of the things about the, um, the Civil War was the amount of debt that was incurred in fighting this war, both in the southern states and in the northern states, the federal government, and they had to maintain that control of the money right. supply, and um, Lincoln issued the greenbacks, right. which he became the issuer of money instead of these devils of the synagogue of Satan. So you mean after all the evil that Lincoln actually did in this war, he actually did something right? Well, he tried to, and then they just shot him dead. And just was, like they shot Kennedy dead, John because Kennedy. that's right. Mm -hmm. Just like they might shoot Ron Paul dead or anybody because they, they, they want to oh, audit yes. the Federal Reserve yes. right now. Right. One thing I'd like to just add mm -hmm. to what you've said, that mm -hmm. Dan Smoot said it bears reiterating, mm -hmm. is the fact that none of these issues today, whether it be abortion, whether it be school prayer, whether it be gay rights, whether it be any of these, the Voting Rights Act of 1963 and 4, all of them are legal. And the important point that needs to be stressed is that all of them can be undone with a swoop of the pen. Mm -hmm. If the Congress had a moral fiber left in it, which Nothing. we don't, Nothing. but if we had good people, good populace, good voters electing a moral Congress, they would simply pass the law based on Article 3, Section 2, Clause 2 of the U.S. Constitution stating that Congress and only Congress reigns supreme over the courts mm -hmm. in all appellate jurisdiction. So the appellate jurisdiction of the federal courts, these tyrants that we've had like Judge Patin uh, and infamous men like Judge Boyle mm -hmm. and people like that and, and in your neck of the woods, Boston, Garrity, tyrants like that would be taken away. Their, their rulings would be to totally negated and null and void. Well, Rick, out of all of the um branches of government. Everybody says, oh, they're co-equal branches of government. No, they're not co-equal branches not of government. The, that is the, a false doctrine. It is, it is a false doctrine, and it's a lie perpetrated mm -hmm. by the controllers, is that right. all of these things are equal, mm -hmm. and they're not. Congress mm -hmm. was supreme. The Congress represented the people who right. were the supreme rulers of themselves, right. and that was right. the nature of the government. The president was there to execute the laws of that Congress. Congress developed, not to create his own signing statements and mm -hmm. develop his own executive orders. You mean orders. like George Bush did yes, and, like, and Obama e does? Exactly. Yeah. Executive orders and signing statements mm -hmm. negating the laws of Congress and not to have the Supreme Court dictate to right. us through judicial activism. Right. Very limited role. Right. Court. It was so limited 
that there was not even in the beginning of this country's history a Supreme Court building. You know where they were? I think they were in the men's room. Down they were the in the basement. <laughs> now they were close. It was as yeah. close as you come. They were in right. the basement. The yeah. They were in the basement, and they would dare not look upstairs to the Congress, the representatives right. of the people, no, that's absolutely and true. dare cross them in anything that they were doing. Right. They just wouldn't yeah. do it because they knew their place at that time. And all you have to do is go back to, to the, the Joseph story and, and the people who you know, explain the nature of the judicial system at its infancy in this country, so we, and we you'll have understand a lawless, that. Like Dan Smoot said, we have been reduced now to, to a judicial oligarchy mm -hmm. at the mercy, at the mercy of some fascist judge, some uh, man or woman in white or black robes or whatever pajamas they may wear and bangs a gavel and says, I am the law of the land, like Patine did, a man like that burning in hell in the lake of fire. You know, it, it, it just galls me to think Rick, of what we have perpetrated and what we have allowed and to happen. And we're falling even deeper into this with this sort of my air oh. uh, confirmation experience that we're, we're going through. Uh, this woman Outrageous. is has she's been on the second district appeals court in Washington, and she's been you know th th they've had ten decisions brought to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has listened to ten of the decisions that came from her court right. up at the Supreme Court and overturned nine mm -hmm. of them. Nine out of the ten got overturned. Only one was substantiated. Now, the, the, the lawyers that practiced be, before this supposed god of a judge woman who is smarter than everybody, the, the lawyers who rate these judges rated her as being arrogant, belligerent, bullying, uh, hot. Oh, and, well, then she and, should be right at home in the Supreme Court. Well, it's something about these Latino women because we had the <laughs> we had, no we had the same thing with Maria Sanchez yes. in in Massachusetts mm -hmm. where this woman they kicked a imagine they kicked a judge in imagine how egregious her transgressions were for her Martinez in Rhode Island yeah. for for her to be ousted from a judicial position in the state of Massachusetts. And what happens with this woman? Right. The, the, the Kenites, the, the synagogue of Satan, makes her have her own TV program where she's on TV right. now. She's not right. a judge anymore because right. she's such a horror show in Massachusetts and she belittled and berated the lawyers and anybody who she happened to disagree with like this sort of my woman who the you know I only know what the what the lawyers are well, saying. Well I think we've been you know, we're beyond the point of redemption anyway so it doesn't matter the Supreme Court is now the law of the land not the Constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, the federal Whatever government, they think it is. The executive branch is the law of the land. Uh, we have a lawless government and now they are imposing upon us the conditions which will lead to a full-scale rebellion at some point. Mm -hmm. I do see bloodshed in the streets. I do see violence taking place. I do see American resistance growing. People have had it. They're taxed to death. They cannot take it anymore. And there's the ADL and the Southern Poverty Law Center drafting this bill in Congress that says people like us mm -hmm. and people like you out there who mm -hmm. inspire this kind of thinking will be put on trial as terrorists. Now you know why they don't want us debating the so-called Holocaust story. Because if we were, then the whole story might collapse. Well, the that's, their, that's their religion. That's a religion of Zionism. Their, their, yes. That is their ticket exactly. to control the masses. Look what you did to us. And, you know, if, I didn't do anything it's to that. It's a form them. of racial, racial supremacy that I've never seen in my in the, all the years that I've studied history for one people to claim a certain genocide and unique and then to say now it's payback time for all of you dumb goyim out there and if you don't accept our